you proud of this? Yeah, obviously. What if it was a fun project? It, it's one of them things that, how often do you say, I built a cabin in a van, like really? With wood that's, what's it, almost 100 years old? 100 years old, 1921. I started to realize just how much material I used to throw away when I used to do barn teardowns. We started at home. We built a couple barn doors and it kind of just took off from there and then now it's a pretty big trend throughout North America. What goes through your mind when you tear one of these older buildings in Alberta down? First thing is always the history of it. It's nice to go into a barn and kind of know where it came from and what was involved in it. So to see a barn out in an area like this manage to stand for as long as it did and for us to be able to save the wood we did off it was pretty incredible. That's how I take every project on. Let's just go with it. The van came to be insulated and I needed to get the framing done based on the storage and the needs inside the van so that you can transition from working to cooking to sleeping to the out. If the layout doesn't flow and there's no function, that was the, probably the part that would have messed up the whole project on us. Help me out, what was the idea here? Um, this is actually gonna be a workstation for him, but because of limited space, um, we had to make room for the fridge, as well as a place for the chair to sit. We made this so you can flip it up and latch it, and then you can flip it down, and you have your workstation when you need to. Makes more storage than what he actually has available. There was a lot, a lot of demand around storage. Yes, so this section here, we've got the heater on the bottom. This will be all storage, and there's little lips on everything so that when he's driving, not a lot will fall out. Everything opens up so you can get access to all your panels. Um, this is where all the electronics are, so you have to get access to it. Battery changes, inverter. So we had extra storage, so I put another piece in here. This here, along here, is all storage. So talk to me about the bed. There were some specifics here. Well, the bed had to be high enough so that you could fit gear in from this side underneath what's here, as well as have three compartments of storage for all the camera gear. And you have access to it, it'll flip up. And inside you have as much storage as you can possibly handle if you need to haul extra gear around and extra camera gear. Clothes, I mean, ultimately this is a work van, but it also needs to be on the road when the, when the fellow is, is traveling. You need as much room as to get through as you possibly can. So what we decided to do is just a sliding bypass set of doors. They're on little latches so they don't move. Opens up in here, you have full access to hang your clothes or shelves in there. Full storage all the way down to the bottom. You can put your boots in the bottom, that way they're out of the way. One of the key features of the van is the ability to have the flow out the back because right. there's some heavy stuff that we're carrying in here. That's the idea, is that the ability to actually just come up and pull things out instead of having to go through and around. I'm just seeing a, a single bed in here. Mm -hmm. It's just for one guy. You see, it's just for one guy. <laughs> <laughs> man cave. Man cave went through my head. I just wanted rich, dark colors, texture, a little bit of sheen to keep it easy to maintain. So the type of wood that we chose, it's a, a reclaimed fur. So it's that nice, rich, medium brown. And we just kind of brought out those natural tones and enhanced them. For the cladding, we're looking for a uniform finish. We're looking for something that is pliable, especially for something like the ceiling here that is convex. So something that can bend without breaking. Whereas structures like the desk, something a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, we used the pieces of the indoor of the stalls. The big challenge with working with Reclaimed, on, especially in here, you've got to make the wood into a veneer, making sure that it's going to adhere to the new wood that's inside for the frame of it. Bought a machine up from the US that allowed us to veneer faster. A lot of it was quarter inch what we put in here. So you're taking away half of the weight 
And the fact that you're going down the road and you're putting it through a lot of punishment, we bolted everything to the actual framework of the van because you're gonna be living in this all year, right? So you gotta have some room for the wood to naturally shrink and swell, but also you don't want it to come flying off as you're driving down the highway. It was nothing that we'd ever done before, so it was taking other things we'd done in our past and putting them towards this project. We came through in what we wanted to do. It's nice to see that finished result. The world's full of so many kind of simulated products and everyone can kind of sense that they're not real. So when you work with stuff like this, um, people really notice the difference that something real has been around for a long time. Most of the stuff that we can reclaim is anywhere from 60 to 100 years old. It has a character to it like you don't find anywhere. Every piece of wood has a little story. When you put it into the finished product, it speaks miles about uh, where it's been and what it's been through, so yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. Every cowboy is specific on their shape of their hat. So in order to keep the hat exactly as is, my grandfather was a blacksmith and he built this to keep his hats from getting wrecked and the crown from getting misshapen. So he didn't have to reshape his hats. So this, your dad built? This one, yes, dad built, yeah. Right, now it's gonna be in, a, in another van that's gonna go for another 100 years, eh? I hope so. <laughs>